So this is going to be a classic mid-tempo blues uh, with an eighth note uh, feel. The significant thing here is going to be that we're going to be changing it up a little bit in that it's going to be a minor blues uh, in C. So we have C minor, F minor 7. And then for the turnaround, uh, instead of going to the, to the 5 chord, we're going to go to A flat. Okay? And then to G and then back to and then back to C minor. Okay? Um, so there you have it. That's the changes. Uh, check out the performance and then I'm gonna break it down. So what did I do here? You know, one great rhythmic element that you can rely on is just playing the backbeats. And that's what exactly what I did in starting this one off. Just playing simply, you know, Motown tunes made, well, gosh, I was about to say every Motown tune has guitars tanking on on the backbeat so i'm not sure if that would be a correct statement but certainly many of them do so you know and that's just you're just you can some you know catch them with upstrokes or downstrokes but the point is 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 a certain articulation where this chord is tight you know one two three four one two so you, you might think, wow, that's really simple to do. You know, can't you show me something cooler than just doing that? Well, if you can do that, then great. But, you know, it's you might not be able to do because if you're not, you know, haven't developed that sense of time that we've been talking about, being able to lock that in with the correct feel and knowing that you're landing on two and four every time, you know, might be a little bit trickier than you think until you do try it. So one, and notice what I'm doing here. You know, you're, you gotta, one um, thing that you can do is, you know, keep some motion in your arm that's, in your wrist, that's constantly keeping that time. So you, it's not about just landing on two and four and you're sitting there like a uh, like a statue and hoping to land on the right beat as you're doing it. But you're, you should be internalizing and feeling the rhythm even when you're not playing. Um, uh, uh, I, I was working with a student once and we were talking about just that and about the musical time and I was saying you know if you're watching professional musicians I would say 
99.9%, if not 100% of the time, you're going to see that something they're doing in their performance, in their physicality, is often, if not always, keeping time. You might see singers with their microphone holding it and, and, and doing this, they're tapping, or, or, you know, so, you know, we were, we were looking at some videos, there was like the Gary Clark band, and, you know, of course it was very groovy and everybody was in it, and, uh, and I said, hey, check out the horn section. The horn section wasn't playing, and it's like, what did you notice? The trumpet player was standing there, and even when he wasn't playing, he was holding his horn going like this keeping his groove going so that he knows when he jumps in with that next horn line, you know, that he's going to be on. And, and then he was like, you know, well, that sounds great. You know, the Gary Clark band is funky, but what about if, you know, we want to like look at Slash? So we put up like a, a Slash performance and the guys were all jamming. And he goes, well, I, I don't see the lead singer keeping time. And I was like, well, you know, look at him very closely. And then sure enough, you could see, the, you know, that, it, that his leg was moving. You know, it was keeping that beat. So the thing that I'm saying here is when you are playing, always make sure you're feeling the time that's going by, even when you're not playing. And that's one of the things that's going to help when you're playing those backbeats and playing in general that you're feel that you're keeping a pulse going even if it's not with your you know it should be somewhere in your body and especially for us guitar players your wrist is a perfect place for that to be happening because you got to you're going to be jumping in on a rhythm so playing that two and four one two look my hand so I'm already all the beats are already going by, so I'm just bringing my hand over to the guitar to catch the ones that I want to catch, you know. So that first chorus, you know, notice how I was embracing just locking in on that two and four. And you should be trying that too as you jam along with the performance example. So um, with the jam, with the jam uh, version, the extended version. So, and then within here, I was using some of those elements that I talked about, you know, with the, with the, you know, with moving inside the chord. So now that you've seen, you know, he, heard me explain that, and you'll see that in the video performance, you'll see where I used those things. Um, once on the C minor, I'd used the, uh, you know, some fourths that were sliding down. Listen. I did some, you know, you know, uh, you know, leading back. So listen how that's a. Um, you know, I was down here when I went to the A flat on one of the changes. Uh, I had this, you know, this kind of classic R&B. You know what I did leading into the A. You know on that A flat uh, major seven. Um, you know I think there wasn't really too much more you know mysterious things going on. Listen to some of those colors there. Again, we kept the changes straight. Wasn't adding any extra tensions in this case on the going to the five chord. Um, but one of the things that you can do, you can throw that in to make it a little funky. Or you know, you're you're like in this turnaround, for instance, if you're going from here. Like right, check this out. No leading back. What did I do there? You know, and why is that working? Watch it. You know, you're up here, you're adding that uh, flat six. 
and then by this motion you're going to use that getting the uh, flat nine with that voicing you know so that's just another way you know another color with these kind of movements these uh, uh, You know, you know, another thing is you can add, you know, some melodic embellishments too. I didn't throw any of those in here, but for instance, here's a way that you might be able to do that. I'm gonna play through the changes one time. It's like lead into your chord. You know, it's like it's a little lead line, but you're putting it in the rhythm context because it's just a small taste that's bringing you to the next chord change. Um, so with some of those concepts and ideas in mind, have some fun with that performance track and then adding a little more flavor and a little more funk to that groove.